Welcome to Vox Fan Fest 2023. I'm Lourdes Perez and I'm your host for the listening room. Uh, it is my honor to introduce Enina J. Enina J describes herself as a black lesbian woman writer that uses poetry as a tool for survival and to break silences around all forms of violence against girls and women. Um, focusing on the intersection of race, sexuality, and poverty. Her publications include A Body of Rooms, 2017, a 98-minute film of the same name, Bricks, Blood, and Water, 2019. Her work is timeless. We knew she was a gifted visual artist as well, but most recently, the evolution revelation that is in Ina J is that she is a composer of electronic music and oral soundscapes that are simply beautiful and brilliant. Her new album is called Emotions, and I sat down with her to talk about it. Um, hoy vamos a escucharla. Welcome, I Nina J. I'm not distinguished in this one. That's me as well, so I don't care if you put that in. That's so, me. in one of the poems I was listening to, there's this type of typewriter, and some of us are old enough to know what a typewriter is. And the way you use it in that poem is really um, powerful, impressive, precise, and just just gets to the visceral feeling of what you're trying to say, what, yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, it's so innovative, it's different. It's so I am very moved by your doing that because I think that the world needs a different sound altogether, not only in poetry but sounds, things that enrich people. And so, um, how do you arrive at that typewriter? Because I, I wanted to actually be in the process of that because that's how it happens for me like sometimes I have to forget that I do poetry for a living I really have to because it influences if it starts to influence the way I write then I, I, I give myself a hell of a time about that and so I that's the process the starting to type and I think that that's deletions <laughs> sorry I just remember what deletions is about but um that's how it happens. And I like the typewriter because I'm old school like that. And I, 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 I miss the old school of writing. I miss the typewriter. I miss my notebook. I hate that it's so much easier for me to type on the computer now because I miss the texture of the paper. I miss the sound of the, the, the keys on the typewriter when I used to type back in the day. And not only that, in that piece, it, it, with that typewriter in the beginning, there's also that song which irritated me at first here I go, which I was just doing one day, and I recorded, and I'm like, okay, I'm about to put this here, and I'm like, no, but it doesn't go, and it's too long. I couldn't make myself shorten it. I couldn't, you know, speed it up. It's just, it still makes me uncomfortable how long that pause in the beginning of that song is, but it's real, and um, there, are, there are times I like it, and so married with the typewriter, that particular part, the song, and the, and the, the echo in, in the back of it, you know, th there's nothing else in that room except for me and that typewriter and this, this, this soft wailing. You know, like, am I going to actually say this? Am I going to let myself tell this truth? And so I found a way to make let myself tell that truth and also delete it at the same time or stop typing. And that that shows that that's the illustration of the process. Like, do I do this? Okay. No. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that's 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 what it's like, you know. And to go on to stay it, you know. I, I like that you like that part, and I, I'm honored that uh, by uh, your thoughts about it, it means a lot to me, you know. Considering who you are, where you've been, what you do, and uh, hell yeah. So that that I'm gonna keep that forever. I'm gonna take that out of my tent tonight and play with it like a toy. <laughs> I wanted to ask about. Work, you beautiful, amazing work, and we, I've been thinking. I was listening, and I, I was telling you before that I felt that the music and the poetry were waiting to meet each other. And I want you to tell me how, how you arrived to that. 
um, and during the program we're going to show some of your pieces for people to hear so that they know what we're talking about but uh, I would say it happened quite accidentally and um, poetically um, Nidra um, challenged me last year when we were here at the festival there was a deaf poet who had a CD with music and Nidra kept taunting me because she's been after me to get my poetry, um, the sound recorded. And so I was playing with her because we play with music a lot and she showed me garage band and she showed me soundtrack. And then I went home and just started playing and then I found out, like the first time I made a, uh, I composed a song musically, I just never thought I was capable of anything like that. It was something I loved and I wanted to listen to it and I was just amazed by it. And then, I, and I hadn't even thought of adding my poetry to it at that point. And then um, it just, it, the marriage, it, it, it was serendipitous almost. It, it, it just happened. I, I really, I can't even give you the ABC letters. I, I really can't. It, it, it just happened. And all of a sudden, I was just consumed by it. It was all I was doing all day, every day. All day. I, I'm an obsessive like that. I'm a compulsive. And I was just doing it all day, every day. And so now, it's just a dance, you know, and I, I feel like I found a part of myself. Like, not only am I finding a part of myself that I feel lived in me that I didn't have already, but it helps me to have the courage to reach for more. Like, okay, so what else can I do? What else can I say? I'm finding new ways to talk, you know? And so the, the music is not just music to me. Like, the, that's language, you know? Yes. Music is language, of course. It's not a new concept, but it had never been my language. And now I had another language to play in. I had the same one all the time, and I just keep finding, just like when I found pouring paint, that was a new language. When I, when I started drawing, that was another language, and I just keep finding these different languages to express these things that I want to say. And here's the thing. Every time I find a new language, I find a new layer of myself that's lighter. Like, it, it, or either... I, I'm either lifting burdens as I'm doing it or just getting beneath stuff. I don't know what's happening, but I feel more musical. Like, I move different, kind of, and, like, I start thinking that way, you know. Like, I, I still don't write poems and think of, like, music like that. The poem just com comes out the way it is. But when I finish, me like, oh, my God, what if I put a piano on that? You know, I think I just need some saxophone. Oh my God, what if I put some some harmonica next to that? You know, so and I know like this needs that. This wants that. I actually let it want things. So I let my poetry. I guess in a sense, my poetry can become its own like a sentient. But my poetry becomes sentient. Like it becomes this person that has its own wants. It wants things now, which means I can want more now. I don't know. So that's the best way I can answer that. I, I, I love your answer because I was going to ask you what it gives you, but you already answer it. Yeah. And I, I feel like I can see things when I, when I hear the poetry with the music, I, I can see movement. Mm -hmm. um, the way you choose how the piano is going to be, it's not going to be like the one the note here, it's like the, the swerving and the movement and the sensuality and the just like of that. And I like, the, I, might, I like making it complicated behind it. Like me and Nidra had a conversation once we were uh, collaborating. And she was like, well, wait a minute, what if you put it on this? I wanted it to be off the beat kind of thing because it was, I wanted, I wanted to create a little chaos and then smooth that chaos out. I like the chaos that I could put behind the smooth beat. And I can make both because I am both. I'm, I'm smooth and chaotic. You know, yes. I'm everything. So I, I like being able to actually make that, which is hard. It's difficult sometimes to make that behind poetry because, you know, I can't talk twice. You know, I can't say a sentence and say another sentence at the same time live. But now I can add the complication behind me. I can do that. Where I, and I think I've always wanted to be able to do that, and it's always existed for me like that. And so that I interrupted you, but that part right there, I didn't want. I, I, that's important. I want that to be a, a part of this. So, hey. as we know, art is um, is powerful. It can be a, a potion. It can be a poison. 
it can be something that is given out it can be something that comes at us and and I want to know how you deal with with that in your poetry as it interacts with the world because you interact with different people in different settings and it it, it may trigger people to one thing and it may heal somebody from to other and and everything has to go through your body yeah and how do you how do you make yourself uh, centered and be able to deliver that uh, in a, a way that is not compromising your word yeah. and it's not hurting you, mm -hmm. but it's delivering what you need to deliver? How, how that happens with you? You know, what's interesting is sometimes I hate the fact, I think it's I would often say to this useless that I came up with the name E Nina J because I was never going to be doing poetry from a stage. I was always just going to be writing. So that was going to be a pen name. And, you know, I wanted people to be like, well, who is that lady? You know, that type of thing. So what I find now is, you know, I, I write them, but I don't think about them when I'm up there. I actually, I mean, certain poems, yeah, but I ne it never occurs to me to not say something because it's for me. Is I'm liberating myself. I'm speaking my truth, and it's important to me. I used to, I went to, I, I was telling a friend before, about uh, some years ago, I stopped doing poetry for a long time because I found myself getting not only arrogant, because I had never used, I wasn't used to people clapping for me or anything like that. So not only was I getting arrogant, but it began to affect what I was writing, like what would people want to hear and what would make people clap. And I wasn't scared no more. So once that happened, I stopped doing it until I could get scared. And I said, you know, it's, got, it's for me, Lord, it's, you know, like, it's for me. I mean, and I know some of it is traumatizing, but here's the thing, we're going through these things. You're not hurting because I said it. You're hurting because somebody did that thing to you, you know, and and now luckily people are aware of me so i figure if you're coming here then you're prepared to be in this occupied space with me and I, i'm even past the point where i feel like i need to take care of people i don't everybody is responsible for themselves and it's about the healing for me because the, the tears are good the pain that shows up is good i don't see that as trauma that shows up that's not re-traumatization that's that's bringing it up and out. It's like pus coming out of a wound. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's in there. If it wasn't coming out now, it would be trapped in your body. And I'm not going to leave it trapped in my body because you're too sensitive to hear it. You know, because I was going to kill myself. You know, for a long time. That was the plan. That's how the poetry started. I was just wanting to get everything out that I had to say. And then I was going to take my leave. That's what it was about. And then I realized that people were listening to me. So I don't, I don't worry about that part anymore. I'm about, I still have so much to liberate. I still feel shame. You know, there's a lot of things I need to let go of. And I don't, and you, you said earlier, you called me fearless. I'm not fearless. I'm full of it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I want to write that shit out. And, 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 I, and I, it's not, I used to want to be that. I don't want to be fearless no more. Even the writing that I've done with, with Genesis, that we do so much work around fear. I have... I, I, I gave it a body. I, l I let it be a friend of mine. You know, even like with the, the rape and the incest. Fear showed up, yeah, but I misunderstood its purpose. I thought it showed up with him. It didn't. It like showed up like a couple minutes before him, actually. Like, hey, something's coming. You know, but I assigned it the same voice, and I, and I just never wanted to feel fear. I, I love it now. I love it. I'm scared tonight, even though I complain about it, like I'm terrified about tonight. But that's because I know I'm doing something that actually means something to me. Like, this is my life. I'm living my life doing something that matters, and I'm telling my truth. You don't have shit to do with nobody else. I'm not telling nobody's truth, and I say it all the time. That's why I like saying, I, 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 I ain't talking for nobody else but me. I ain't naming shit for you. I'm not doing nothing. I'm liberating Johnny. That's you need a J backwards, whatever. But I'm that's I'm about the liberation of Johnny. And so I brought up the Nina J because when I get up there, I don't have these thoughts. It, it, I don't know what happens, but I, I'm I'm not scared. I'm not you know none of that. I, I I I'm not gonna be here. Like this is just 
you know, this is just a moment. This is just a moment, and it don't even matter, you know, and these people don't even matter, and I'm being judged and thought about by people who don't even know who they are and are, you know, still crying in the bed and curled up in fear, and that's fine, but that's not me no more, and I'm not going to pretend that it is. Like, I don't even know where I'm going, but I can't, I, I, the travel, I like I like the travel of it, and I like leaving the trail for the sisters and the, and the brothers behind me, and the, the folks behind me, I like leaving the trail for my people, so they don't have to spend 20 years realizing that they were never broken. That's one thing Jesus taught me. I was never broken. I lived my whole life just trying to get my power back, and I never lost it. It was always here. I never got broken by a choice somebody else made. Nobody ever had the power to break me. You know what I'm saying? And, and just realizing just that simple thing. So I forgot what your question was, but I'm, I'm, liber I'm just trying to liberate myself one poem at a time. One poem at a time. That's what this is about for me. I'm, I'm not worried about anybody else. They got to do their own work. They got to take care of their own feelings. I'm enough. I'm a thick-ass body. And I'm talking about my emotional body, my mental body, my psyche. I'm thick. You know, so I got a lot to deal with right here, and I'm good with it. So I don't feel that kind of responsibility. I'm 53 years old. I, I'm whole. I got a hold of myself, and it's other people's responsibility. I have a hold of themselves. I'm not going to let, you know, I don't let white people fall in my arms crying no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. You can cut that out. No, don't cut anything out. But I'm done with that. And I'm telling what's about to come out of my mouth now. I am just thrilled that you're here, that you chose to push through, and you are uh, just power, and you are just beauty, you are By all means, my eyes are deep watching. soul, and thinking, and, and just brilliant, and, and a treasure. So, I just really honor that you are here with us and that you exist and walk this earth in the way that you do. So I'm honored to thank too. you. And, and just let me take a moment. Um, because when you asked me to do this, and I told you this already, anything you ask me, because I, I respect you so much, your artistry, your, your real, you're always honest. I love our time together. I love the intimacy that we created just because we walk around with no skin. You know, so we meet flesh to flesh, and it's a wet experience, it's fluid, right? So the fact that you approach me like this, that I feel like that about your work, that you could possibly feel like that about my work, my, I must be beautiful. Be, uh, you know, I just said that earlier because of the mirrors that are in my life. If you are somebody that, so when you asked me to do this, it was an automatic yes. But here's the thing, white women ask me to do shit all the time. You made sure to tell me, hey, you're going to get paid for this. You're going to get paid for this work. That matter. You know, that you think about that. And you ain't rich. You know, Box Film is not a, a, a rich establishment. I, I mean, I know that. But the principle in that, you know, the morality in that, the truth in that, um, and the artistry in that, the Lord is in that, the honoring of Janine and me and Jay and that, just... That's a, that's a part of it. That's a part of uh, why I love you so much and why what you say about my work matters to me. A lot of people, oh, I love your poetry, love your poetry, but, you know, who is that vessel that speaks that? I know what the, who the vessel is that speaks it, and it matters to me. It matters to me. I love you so much. I love your work. Mesmerized by it all the time. And the clouds, the way the sky moves for you. And you moving for me, and I'm moving for you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, much, sister. yeah, and it still mesmerizes me, and I still crush. I still crush. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and that's cool. I love you. I love you. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to take my work in on the way, or wherever you did it. You said you was in the car. Yes, I am. It matters. I, I miss it. Yes. I stand at its edge as it opens itself wider like a woman who wants me ground invites me inside her sometimes I miss my stones in the places that are soft sometimes I question my flesh why we take them all off 
Wish I had kept a few for the nights that scream me woken when the earth splits itself with what once life unspoken. Ground opens after earthquake, creaking ground mouth stretching open. Oh, what a beautiful mouth. I could build me a house. I could write here forever. I could live like a mouse. I could paint me transparent. Paradox naked, unseen, crawl into soil blanket, right? Poems behind scenes. What a beautiful mouth. Quiet ground below flames. From deep in its belly, it whispers my name like an old friend who resents me for walking away. Like an old lover I left still wanting my stay. Open ground shapes itself into a beautiful grin. Want me to make it what lives deep inside its within. Ground mouth looks like want with a tongue like a slide that is covered in piano keys to master no sound inside. Ground mouth be so tempting when I want to go hide. Ground mouth sounds so pretty, a kind of musical died. Ground mouth want to swallow, my sweet body won't let. Ground mouth says it loves the taste of all my scars and all my wet. The ground's giant tongue aching to swirl all around me, but I shall lose some of me and I, I kind of just found me. That tongue so inviting, a promise of savor. That tongue so complicatedly flavored. That tongue wears a mask I remember from the past, cause either means save it or seduce, induce last. The tongue and the ground that my body swirls round. My body makes sounds like a thing being drowned. Limbs of taffy shake and they linger. Tips of toes, tips of fingers. No ground beneath, just the things now unknown. Perhaps this release can make a pretty home, but there's mouth in the ground. If I let me fall down, Sweet cheeks of flavor, it's sweet tongue abound. This mouth in the ground with a throat smell like cradle, with a rock in me song for the not very stable. Mouth, this mouth, beautiful mouth in the ground. Limbs stretched across opening, I feel sliding down the slick of these walls of the ground. Bellow cheeks, the haunting sounds, the little bones break and creak. Swallow me, swallow me, I see from the edge. Don't do it, don't do it. Hang on to the ledge. That beautiful mouth where I lived a few lives. That is a tricky mouth, almost did not survive. So risky, so risky. Had to close just a little, but this body's so heavy, I might plunge into middle. But then what would I say? Cause nobody were here and I, I said so much already, could last me for years. I go over the edge, child. Here, I go over the edge, child. Child. Here we go over the edge, child. I I I I I go over the edge. I 
just erased a whole poem talking about sex because I didn't want anyone to see me naked same day they saw me enraged. These deletions. I was afraid of anyone knowing this mad black woman can move from rage to wanting to fuck in a matter of hours. Rage I feel with passion and I have no space left to hold all of it inside me. I need to be open wide. Fuck. Delete that. What is the protocol for arousal in the context of racial mass murder? I don't even know if I am aroused or if I just crave pressure on my bodies, in my bodies, up my bodies, my bodies that want to lick themselves but can't. Because if I could, I'd climb a tree and lick me all day. Delete that. Though I do love the way rage tastes on my tongue, and I do love the way pain feels sticky between my fingers. If I could do it myself, I would. If I could do it myself, I could avoid writing shit like this. What is the protocol for wanting in the context of racial mass murder? Delete that. I want to delete this whole thing, but I won't let me. I can't stand me sometimes. Sick of deleting my shit. Sick of second thinking. Sick of being careful. Sick of policing myself. Sick of living this long, still feeling the need to avoid a stereotype. Fuck. I am filled with emotion. I am sick of feeling if I could just have that pressure up inside the middle, push the pain out of every hole I got. Delete that. I want to cry, because where do I lay this rage down? Because how do I fuck this pain out? Because why do I give a shit what anybody thinks about me? I keep deleting. I am sick of deleting. When I started this poem, I thought we were going somewhere, someplace sweet and delicious. And I may have gotten there except for this pandemic we suffer called racism. I don't trust my black body in the hands of most minds. I would have to almost turn your whole skull inside out, pick out your hidden thoughts like poppy seeds. What is the protocol for ravenous in the context of racial mass murder? Delete that. This ain't about shit. I've deleted a hundred words in five minutes. My body is gonna be mad at me. The only reason I am still typing, because if I can't get us to some place, I'll have to hear my mouth for the rest of the night. And instead of imagining all the beautiful ways I would love my rage to be fucked this night, I will be cursing myself out under my breath as if I cannot hear me. <laughs> look, look what I just fucking did, you see. See, this is what I'm talking about. I can't even be aroused without the smell of the shit seeping into my thoughts. And I get lost in the maze of this bullshit and the tide rushes back to the place from which it came but did not come. When I started this poem, I was taking me someplace. A beautiful place. A sensual place. A delicious place. But I got stopped by the police on the way. And now... I'm just sitting naked in my jail cell, tripping, tracing back my steps. Chart the path I took from reaching to balance my rage with my passion. I hate the police living inside me. It's like I am slammed my car into a tree called racism and my arousal. Well, my arousal.
pronounced dead not long after arrival. Fuck. How I let this poem literally fuck me out of fucking. <laughs> Delete that.